ShireSociety.com. Churchill used to say in World War I, the problem is so simple that people don't comprehend it. We just need to figure out a way to put a thin piece of steel between our men and the enemy when we clear them out of their trenches. In the same way with modern war fighting, we need to figure out a way to do it without taxpayer expense and without killing or harming bystanders. That's it. If either one of their, those problems were solved, uh, that would take the pants off the IS and the Russian expansionism uh, by itself. But we can't even make progress towards either of those goals, especially the first one, the uh, taxpayer issue, as long as there are unaccountable institutions handling defense. The Jordanian uh, system is probably more accountable than the Washington system because, first of all, it's a small country. The government is a little more accessible there. Uh, being a monarchy, uh, the king there has an heir to think about and a desire to maintain his dynasty after his death. A little less budget to work with, a lot less budget to work with. In America, the system is so bloated that almost the only hope for it is collapse. But someday, you know, if you if you want... If you want to have a just war, you've got to remove the aggression from it. That can't happen as long as the institution fighting a war can tax the people and thus be unaccountable for its actions. My gosh, if we could just ever get to that point someday, it probably won't happen in my lifetime if it had already happened. This would probably be my life's focus. What are the methods by which bad guys can be fought without aggression, without hurting bystanders, without hurting taxpayers. Uh, right now, the fight to you know, reduce or limit the government has sucked all the air out of my room, and my pokey but fertile brain probably will not be available for that other fight. Scratch that. Maybe it will be available. Maybe I should think about some of the techniques that a voluntary defense uh, and counterattack force might use. Let's say that uh, it's 20 years in the future and New Hampshire is an independent country and it has no taxpayer funded government. There's a government, it's, it's actually this the, the current type of system that we have except no taxation for the conquered government. They have to raise all their money through United Way type methods or investments or building things and selling them. They have to function like Walmart basically, which means they could be as big as Walmart. Let's say that government were threatened by something like the Islamic State because of the fact that we have, you know, five or six refugees from the Middle East who are Islamic feminists and uh, libertarians. One of them has a newspaper that's similar to the one in Paris that got attacked. It prints blasphemous materials about the Prophet and... Uh, Islam. As a result, there are terrorist attacks inside New Hampshire carried out with support from the Islamic State. These are deadly terrorist attacks. So, that means there's nothing wrong with deadly retaliation. A free and independent New Hampshire could react by selling war bonds, issuing letters of mark and reprisal, hiring spies, deploying tiny drones around the Islamic State without taxpayer expense, using them to find people who are guilty, collecting audio of them incriminating themselves, conducting, conducting discriminate assassinations. Uh, one partial model for this comes from the Israelis, strangely enough. Is what they did in retaliation for their uh, the terrorist attack on their... Uh, athletes at the Munich Olympics, well, they went on an assassination campaign, but I don't think they killed more than 30 or 40 people. I don't know if they got every target right, but at least they were trying to be discriminant in their reaction. reaction. You know, they didn't just go helter-skelter all over the Middle East in retaliation, bombing everything in sight. 
So, you know, that's just off the top of my head over a couple of minutes. There are plenty of ideas, that, uh, you know, the ways that a, a country could fight a war without aggression, you know, without committing acts of aggression, I guess I should say. We don't have to choose between pacifism and Obama drone rampage. Like Gene Kirkpatrick say, used to say, you want to have as many available levels of escalation as possible. So you don't have to jump from level 1 to level 5 on a scale of 10. You can go from 1 to 1.11 or 1 to 1.99. An immovable institution like the Washington government only seems to know how to do the blunt force kind of stuff. It can't change. Uh, that's another advantage a small country with a monarchy has, and that's why the, the Jordanian uh, reaction has been such a PR success. Their retaliatory air raids uh, and their executions, I mean, this is, all, this, this, is, this is all one man having a great deal of flexibility and power to act quickly, a man who is kept in check by his constitutional limits, and his, I think they have a parliament in Jordan, uh, but the small force is usually the nimble one. And I bet to some extent that applies in Jordan. Uh, but imagine how much more nimble a New Hampshire defense could be, especially with New Hampshire not entangled in foreign atrocities that it's committing. Maybe a New Hampshire with multiple defense, you know, private defense uh, companies and charities operating around the state, all with autonomy. In a way, it would be a much more potent force for fighting bad guys than anything Washington can come up with. The old world is collapsing, and it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan, a thriving web forum, and a history of action. It didn't take long to come up with a plan. You can sign up right now at... ShireSociety.com